Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to build your own solar powered Mendocino motor. This is a simple form of brushless motor which is powered by four solar panels mounted onto the rotor. They make a cool desktop toy but generally don't produce enough power to drive anything useful. For this project, you're going to need seven neodymium magnets for the bearings and stator, copper magnet wire to make the rotor windings, a small wooden dowel to make the rotor and base, and four small solar panels which can be mounted onto the rotor. You'll also need to 3D print some plastic components. I've put component details and links to the parts and model files in the video description. I printed out the 3D printed components using black PLA, printed with a 20% infill. Let's start by making the base. You'll need two 9.5cm dials for the length and two 5cm dials for the width of the base. Glue the flat side of the magnets into the corner block and then push one end of the dial into the center. Do the same on the opposite side so that the two magnet poles oppose each other. Now repeat the process to make up the second length. Next glue the two width pieces into the sides of one set of blocks and then glue the two lengths of the base together. This completes the first part of the base, so we can now move on to making the rotor. Measure and cut a 12cm length of dial for the rotor shaft. Use a craft knife to sharpen one end to a point. This reduces the contact area on the end of the shaft, producing less friction. Mark off the positions of the components on the rotor at 2, 5 and 8 centimeters. Now glue two magnets into the rotor magnet holders with the flat faces facing outwards. Glue the first rotor magnet holder onto the rotor shaft with the magnet facing outwards. Then glue the two rotor winding formers onto the rotor shaft with the formers on the outsides Make sure that the two formers are square with each other before the glue hardens. Mm -hmm. 
Glue the second magnet holder onto the end to complete the rotor components. It's a good idea to test fit your solar panels at this stage and check the rotor on your base to see that the magnet polarities are correct before you start doing the windings. Now it's time to make your two windings. Leave a lead on either end of the winding to connect it to the panel. You'll need to make around 60 to 100 turns of wire for each winding. Try to divide it up evenly so that you turn 10 on each side of the rotor shaft to keep it evenly balanced. Finish the first winding and cut the lead before you're ready to start with the second winding. Also make a note of how many turns you put onto the first winding as you'll need to duplicate this for the second. In this type of motor, the solar panel at the top receives light and provides current through the winding which creates a magnetic reaction force, causing the rotor to turn. Because the solar panel is mounted on the rotor, this causes the panel to move out of the light and the bottom panel into the light. They are connected in opposite polarity, so that the current in the winding is reversed and the reaction force is still produced in the same rotor direction. The second set of panels work in the same manner and increase the force on the rotor in the spots where the other two panels are facing horizontally and away from the light source. Once you've completed the two windings, you can connect them to your solar panels. Make sure that you strip off some of the plastic coating from the ends of the magnet wire so that you get a good connection. To connect the windings to the solar panels, you're going to need to connect the positive and negative terminals from opposite solar panels together, and then connect one end of the rotor winding to each one of the branches. You'll need to do the same for the second motor winding. Once the panels are connected, we can test the rotor. Glue a magnet onto a sturdy flat surface or the 3D printed magnet holder, then glue the base onto the same surface. I used a temporary reaction surface to measure the height at which the rotor sits in order to design the 3D printed part for it. You'll need to temporarily tape the panels into place onto the rotor in order to test that the two sets of solar panels produce a reaction force in the same direction of rotation. Line up one length of a winding over the magnet and shine a light on top of the panel. It should gently deflect away from the magnet in one direction. You want the rotor to do this in the same direction for each panel. If one pair moves in the opposite direction, then you'll need to switch the leads on that winding around to the opposite sides of the panels. Once you're happy with the solar panel connections, glue them into place. I then measured up the reaction point to make a 3D printed part to support the end of the rotor. I also added a magnet holder to the base so that the motor could be moved around freely. I sprayed the dials black so that they match the 3D printed components. The motor works best in an area where there's not a lot of ambient light and light is produced from a directional source such as a bright torch or an overhead spotlight. You'll also get better results by gently balancing the rotor.
Try setting it up in a dark room and then shining a torch or spotlight on top of it to get the most power out of it. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy making your own Mendocino motor.